Welcome, my chingus, to episode 15 of Two Way Gooks in Korea. My name is Steven. My name is Josh. And while Josh is not here uh, it, physically, he is superimposed next to me. Um, here in spirit. But Josh is in the in the Girls' Generation Creep Cave, a.k.a. his apartment. Hey, don't hate. If you watched our last reaction video for uh, Block, Block B, B then Jackpot. you would have seen seen us talk more about uh, Josh's place. Mm -hmm. But uh, we're both uh, English teachers living in South Korea. Yeah, been living here about what eight months now, almost. Man, it's been a long time. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we're here to talk about four kind of big differences between America and Korea. And I know we've done something like this before, but you know, there's a lot of a lot of cultural differences that we just keep thinking about, yeah. and uh, I'm not sure what to name them, but we're just gonna keep saying four cultural differences, five cultural differences until we have like 30 cultural differences. Yeah. But people hey. like lists, right? Lists. Um, but these are kind of things that don't wouldn't make would make their own kind of episode. Yeah. Um, so we're gonna start with kind of the the least significant but the biggest difference to me. Mm -hmm. And that is between uh, like how commercials work in Korea. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know if you guys watch like Korean like TV shows, but when we watch it like on TV, the way it comes out is a lot different, right? So in America, uh, your program, if it's like if say a half an hour program, maybe like what ten minutes of it is commercials, right? It'll be intermittent throughout the program. But in Korea, when you watch a show, all the commercials are kind of jam-packed in this like certain time frame. Just just commercials, and it's usually about like at the end ish. Yeah, um, it's really weird. So that is big difference in commercials. So what is another big difference, Steve? So so uh, a bigger difference is mm -hmm. that, um, you know, commercials in America. I mean, commercials is when you're like an up-and-coming actor. Right. Like you kind of commercials is like your step in. Right. It's like maybe you're in a commercial, you know, they're almost all no name actors. Uh, mm. And that's the complete opposite in Korea. In Korea, mm. to be in a commercial, you have to be a gigantic star. Um, you have to be from like a drama, a movie, uh, you know, a K-pop group. Yeah. And they they really, really, really use K-pop groups to like endorse things. Yeah. They, they don't measure success with like album sales as much as they measure success in CF deals. Yeah. Cause I mean, in America you will have like some like B list celebrities go on commercials, right? You'll see like, uh, like Terry Crews being like, you know, old spice commercials and things like that. Yeah. And, but these are like almost everyone in the nation knows who this person is. Yeah. And that's why they're on the CF. And now when you have a group, a K pop group, um, the earnings is is pretty disproportionate if you have one person who's acting in a lot of dramas or doing a lot of CFs. Now CF deals are pretty big, right? Yeah, they're they're in general I, they don't really make much money off off music. Mm -hmm. um, they people here in Korea primarily make money off of CFs. Yeah. So like we've talked about in our podcast before how Suzy is like the CF queen in the mm -hmm. last like three or four years. Yeah. And she makes like millions of dollars uh, just from the commercials. Yeah. And she probably doesn't make that much from music. Cause... Yeah. And she, and she said before that like uh, she has to have a separate contract um, separate from Miss A because she just makes so much money. Yeah. Like originally, like whatever CF she was in, she would just like lump it in with Miss A and they would divide it evenly. But she's just gangbustering. She's the CF. So it's hard to, you know, where you're making say four or five times the amount of every other member yeah. to split it evenly, right? And that kind of makes sense why, you know, like people like SM, for example, kind of just give up a little bit for music because that's not the moneymaker, right? Like it, the whole point of getting catchy music is to get your group popular so that they're on billboards everywhere and mm -hmm. in commercials everywhere. Yeah, we've, um, we've said it before, like K-pop and stuff is part music and part like selling the image of your group, yeah. right? So. Yeah. But it's so weird to me because I remember seeing – like I'd see a commercial with like Ashton Kutcher selling a camera and I'd be like, this is weird. You know? Like, Why is this cheap? What is this dude? Camera? It looks cheap. You're like, like, what is he doing? What, is he, what does he know about 
selling cameras. Does he even have that camera? Like that's what's going through your mind yeah. when you see a celebrity in the states doing that. So but why it's would like I care if, if Ashton Kutcher is taking cameras or taking photos with a Canon? Like I don't yeah. care. But um, it's pretty common knowledge in Korea. It's like okay, like this 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 uh, this actor or this K-pop grouper is doesn't actually eat this chicken or doesn't actually use this facial product or whatever, right? But some people obviously still believe like, oh yeah, I use this because I want skin like Taeyeon's or, you know? Yeah. So. But but I've actually asked some like students <coughs> about it and some other Korean people that I know and it, I'm like, do you actually go to that specific store because G-Dragon's on the cover or G-Dragon's promoting? They're like, I mean, no. no. I mean, I'll buy some like, maybe their bag will have G-Dragon on it and I'll, I'll want their bag, but like it doesn't make me want to buy their shit anymore. But yet, they're they're still getting multi million dollars just to be you know just to look happy next to this you know cream or something. Yeah, I think it's more of like an image thing. Like, yeah, we can have this big name star endorse our product. Yeah. So we're like a trusted company kind of deal. And, and a lot of small stores or like family run stores, like if they've been on a TV show or a drama or their clothing was worn by a celebrity one time and one thing, they'll put a picture on it like right mm-hmm. as like the beacon of like. We're real yeah. now, right? Like, like G Dragon wore our, one of my shirts. Or like Gary from Running Man wore one of our hats. Like, yeah, it's like a it's big, big thing. Deal. It's a big deal. Um, so th- that's still kind of weird. It's weird to me turning on the TV and it's like I know that guy, I know that guy, I know that guy, I know that guy, and and you know. But then again, when's the last time I watched a commercial in America? And that that's all. It's been a while. That 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 don't happen. Uh, it's been a while. And people actually watch commercials here, mm. um, which is strange. But I right. guess when G Dragons on. You know, selling you some stuff, people will watch it. Which right, and it, it just it just defies logic because you're like, well, okay, well, you have like a 10, 10 to twenty minute like gap of just all commercials. Just turn your TV off. You don't have to watch that stuff. But people yeah. actually want to watch it. Like, it's like Super Bowl commercials for them, I guess. I don't yeah. know. Although they do a thing that I I always was like, you can't channel surf if all the commercials are at the same time. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like, it's kind of like a cartel, a yeah. commercial cartel. So if, as long, I guess you could turn your TV off and be like, I'm just going to walk away. but Or you might just sit there and watch commercials for 20 minutes. Um, because you're being a lazy bum watching TV anyways. Yeah, buddy. Um, but uh, let's move on to the second kind of big difference between America and Korea. And that is uh, this the idea of a government job uh, mm-hmm. and how it is in Korea. It is one of the most sought after things is to get a government job. Yeah, and, and like government jobs have a lot of like certifications and testing that you have to go through, but the wild thing is is that it doesn't pay very well. I mean, granted, you do have a pension, but it doesn't pay very well. Um, and a lot of the Korean people that I ask, like, why do you want a government job so much? They say it's because it's stable. Yeah, like obviously the government's going to be around. So if the government has a job opening, that opening should be around. Yeah, kind of deal. And it's like, so like for a biggest example would be teacher. Um, yeah. It's actually a very hard thing to become a teacher in Korea. Very coveted um, too. Yeah. Because it's, it's almost impossible to be fired. Yeah. Um, now that's the same thing in America. It's actually really hard to be fired as a teacher in America or at least in Texas. Mm-hmm. Um, like we, you know, we joke around like you either touch a kid or you touch a kid. Like, and yeah. that's the only two ways you're going to get fired. Um, and but in America, it's like being a teacher is, I mean, not very respected, um, and it's not people's end goal. Like people don't study their whole lives to be a teacher. Yeah, um, a lot of times it's disrespected, right? Like those who can't do teach, like that's oh, a phrase, right? Yeah. And people say it all the time. So definitely a total different like view on on like teachers in general. Like they will call doctors like teacher. They'll yeah. talk. They'll they'll call like people who are just more knowledgeable than them teacher, right? So, just uh, teacher is a position of respect in Korea and, and Asia in general. America not so much. Yeah. Not so much. I mean, that's not to say that the kids respect the teachers like really any more than America. Like kids are still kids. Well, not. Kids are still kids everywhere. Um, kids are kids everywhere. But you know, the big difference is is parents respect teachers more. People yeah. respect teachers more, and. And that just matters a lot. Yeah, the general public respects teachers more. Yeah. And it's not just teachers. It's like uh, if you're uh, if you're like in a law uh, major, for example, right? You can become a lawyer and make a lot of money, or you can be a government, uh, you know, pro- prosecutor, and you're not going to make that much money. But that's the job that everybody wants because it's secure. 
Um, mm. And so, you know, working in the police, oddly enough, I, I don't think they even do much here. Uh, they mm. always look like they're just chilling, hanging around. Maybe, you know, there's some car accidents every once in a while. But I, I've heard it's pretty hard still to become a police officer. Mm. Um, unlike in America, where you, you really just need to have some military experience. And you have yeah. to be smart enough to pass, like, their basic rudimentary test. Yeah. But um, that kind of blows my mind that, uh, like, some people give up being, you know, lawyers just so they can work in the prosecutor's office. Or yeah. or instead of becoming a doctor, they, they're like, I want to be a teacher or a professor, usually a professor. Yeah, um, usually a professor. She's, like, going through that in my school, right? Yeah. Um, but, so, yeah, just hierarchy in general is just a big thing here, right? Like, um, if you are just older or you've been in the job longer then that just automatically means that you know more even if it's not the case like you could be the most incompetent dude ever or the worst teacher at your school like hands down but if you've been there longer than everyone else like nobody's gonna say anything to you because you have seniority and that kind of overrides everything yeah. even logic sometimes right like i think we used to have a teacher that retired this past year but I mean, he was a nice guy, but, like, he just wouldn't do his work. Like, he would kind of, he would go to class and he would kind of talk a little bit, but he didn't do a lot of his paperwork. And in Korea, like, there's an insane amount of paperwork, an insane mm -hmm. amount of, you know, contacting parents and blah, 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 blah. He just wouldn't do it. So, instead of complaining, everybody under him, they just had to do his work for him. Um, and so, they're, I've had teachers, they their work double or triple as hard. Uh, to complete certain projects that they were supposed to all work on together because the older dude is just like, I'm not going to do it. I ain't going to do that. Um, and there's nothing you can say to me because I'm older than you. Yeah. And, and that kind of brings us to the, the third thing, which is kind of the company in general, the company environment mm -hmm. and how so, seniority yeah. is a, a big thing. <clears throat> so working in Korea, working in America is a lot more different than you think. I actually haven't worked in a Korean company, but I do have quite a few Korean friends who have worked or are working in Korean companies. And I've worked in an American company. I have a lot of friends who are working in America. And so I can I have a little bit of experience I can speak on, at least maybe secondhand. But Korean working, obviously, you guys have heard of Hueshik's company dinners. Um, those are really, 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 really important in Korea. Um, I had a friend of mine who um, he's a Korean American. Came to Korea to work for a few years. Um, if you're watching this, Nathan, shout out to you. But he used to tell me um, he didn't really like to trick with his coworkers because he didn't want to get plastered until like 4 a.m. and then go to work at 8 a.m. in the morning. And they would actually like forcibly give him more work. They would say, I, "You know, you didn't come to the dinner last night, so you have more work to do." Like they just said it straight up. And then after a while, they kind of like eased up on him because he would, you know, he would drink a little bit with them, and then they would ease up on him. But that like company dinners are a huge, huge, huge thing in Korea. Like you don't skip those. Yeah. Right? And so, like for example, we're kind of fundamentally different because Josh drinks and knows Korean, and yeah. I don't drink and I don't know Korean. So, mm. but the thing, I mean, I still go to the Hueshiks. I still go to the company dinners because you have to, unless you have like a legit super emergency. Mm. And like, I will sit there for an hour, an hour and a half until I'm kind until of allowed go. to go. Yeah. Just, I, I mean, e eating food's good. And, you know, my co-teacher is there to kind of talk to me a little bit and translate for me. But, you know, there's, there's drinking, there's a lot of drinking. Lots of drinking. Um, it's usually on a weekday. You know, it's not not Friday, not Saturday, not Sunday. It's usually a Tuesday or a Wednesday. Or like a Thursday. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, everyone will show up to work the next day. It's like it's like a bonding experience. I mean, we've said that mm -hmm. before, but it, 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 drinking and eating together in Korea is how you bond. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, yeah. And in, I mean, in America, you have like, company outings and things like that. But if you, your company is so big, if you don't go to those, they're not really going to care. Yeah. But... If you miss a question, like a department question, like people will be like, "Oh, that chingu didn't come to question. Like, what's the deal? Yeah. Like, does he not want to like work like harmoniously with us? Like, it, they kind of like take it as a, like, a personal slight. Like, does he not like us? Is that the deal? Yeah. Kind of, you know. And, and seniority extends to a lot of things. Like, for example, if you're the new guy in your company, uh, maybe you've seen it in a drama before, but like 
you're not you're allowed to leave. Work. Like yeah, you're doing all the bitch work too. Yeah, you're doing all the bitch work, getting the coffee, all that stuff, but you can't leave until your bosses leave. Yeah. Um, so even if you finish all your work and you ain't got no work to do, you can't leave. Um, mm. You kind of got just got to keep doing the bitch work or whatever. Mm. Or maybe you're doing your boss's work to help him finish. Yeah. Um, you're you, you you have no say really in anything, mm-hmm. um, which is kind of like, you know, I have friends that that work you know in, in America too, and I mean a lot of them are kind of like they they can't really say anything you know, mm-hmm. but. Usually in America, you have your own freedom in general to do what you need to do. If you come up with a better, more effective way to do something, you, and you, you can know, prove you it, you can prove it, you can pitch it, you can you can do many ways to kind of get that idea across. I mean, sometimes people work with assholes, and you can't, you know. Yeah, so there's a, sometimes you have a manager who's just kind of an asshole, just like kind of gunning for you, right? Yeah. Um, but most of the time, creativity and individualism are kind of praised yeah. in America, right? Like if you're ingenious, or you can come up with a, a better way to do something. Um, you're you're gonna move up very quickly if you're like proficient, but in Korea, you move up more quickly by how well you respect those who are older than you, yeah. and how well you can like kind of endure the beating you take um, until you can be that senior. At your yeah. work. It's like I I know there's a quote is exact quote somewhere, but it's like it's like the world doesn't change, just people die. Mm-hmm. And it's like sometimes you just gotta wait for the old people to leave or die, and that's how the world changes, you know. Um, and that's kind of how it is in Korea. It's like you just gotta wait until it's your turn, um, mm-hmm. and that kind of bleeds over to like old, old older people in Korea kind of just do whatever. <laughs> they, they don't, yeah, they, don't give they no kind of just do whatever the hell they want. Yeah, like I had a lady who was just yelling at people on the bus for about an hour, and they weren't even doing anything. They were usually just yelling at them mm-hmm. for being. She was uh, assuming that they were rude, uh, and like they weren't saying anything back to her at all. They couldn't. Yeah, you just kind of put your head down and just take it. Yeah. Um, and in America, of course, it'd be like, "Whoop, you know, fuck you, get yeah, out of my face." Like, and it's like they just don't do that here. Like you, crazy old lady. Like, yeah. Probably would have videotaped to put on YouTube or something. But uh, a vine. <laughs> uh, no, and 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 another thing is something I can't remember. So uh, let's move on to the last thing, the fourth thing. And that is, it's a big difference, an incredible difference. We've kind of experienced it. And that is yep. how flirting works in Korea. Ah. Now, th- there's no like blanket way of flirting in America. The, the, you know, I, I don't want to say that. But in general, it usually, I mean, like, how does it go in America, Josh? You, you probably right. do more of it than, than me. <laughs> so in America, like, there, there's a little bit of game, right? Just like showing... Showing interest in someone is pretty obvious if you've lived in America for a while, right? Like maybe you you spend some some time or you say some sweet things or like you do some things for someone. Just like give them a little bit of extra care and like a little bit of extra care is like really obvious. But in Korea, it's different because um, that care is kind of assumed if you're older. Like if you have like people who are younger than you, you're expected to pay for them some, like most of the time and you're expected to, you know, um, kind of dote on them even though they aren't your actual brother or sister. Like, you're supposed to treat them like a brother and sister. And so, flirting kind of gets a little bit, you know, blurry in Korea unless you've, you know, grown up here and you know how to flirt here, right? So, I think the best example is like, if you... If you watch K-dramas, uh, you know, I, I watch my fair share of K-dramas and I'm always like, what the fuck are they doing? I'm like, what? why don't you just admit your feelings and just get it over? You know, like in America, it's always like after you mo- first day, you meet, I love you. I love you. Let's have sex. Like that's usually yeah. the general American thing or, you know, th- that's a blanket statement. But <laughs> in Korea, it's like, I, I love you, but I'm not going to tell you I love you. I'm going to act really nice that's to you. Too forward. And then that's too... I'm going to act not nice to you. Then I'm going to act nice to you. I'm not going to act nice, but I'm going to act nice to you. Um, we call that miltang. Yeah. Miltang. Pushing it's... and pulling. Yeah. Pushing and pulling. So miltang can be purposeful and it can be um, kind of coincidental. So an example of miltang is purposeful miltang. Say that you... 
want to, you like this girl and you want to, you know, flirt with her, like your polling would be like messenger, message, messaging her every day. Like, oh, have you eaten yet? Um, like, what are you doing? What are you up to? And then your pushing would be not to talk to her for three days after that. <laughs> right. Yeah. What the theory behind it is to, during those three days, you're like, does this guy really like me? Like, it, it, because you're being such a jerk, like they think about you all the time. And that is the goal for them to think about you in that way. And obviously there is some like incidental kind of, you know, not purposeful miltang. Like say you are the first person to message someone every day. And one day, I don't know, you get sick or something and then you sleep in and they're like, oh, why doesn't he message me first? That is also miltang too. So, you know, that is kind of the Korean style of flirting. I mean, Americans, a lot of Americans will get a girl's number and like wait a few days like to call them, which I think is like totally stupid. But I mean, yeah, there's games in both. I mean, they're, they're both games. games. Like they're both, both games, purposeful right? and, and accidental. But um, like just a, a lot of like the Korean game. I mean, since we're American, I just it's just so like we've talked to some girls and they're like, if a guy just straight up is like, I like you, not in a creepy way, not in like an obsessive way. It's just like, I like you. Let's go out. Like they, to... they'll be like, not even if you think he's cute, even if he's the guy that you wanted, you know, like the fact that he's like straight up with it, they don't like that. They, they want to play that game. Um, okay. Well, it's, it, it's a little bit different because if two people, most of the time, if two people like each other, Right, like really, really like each other, then no problem, right? They just get together. Like, I like you, do you want to date? Yes, and that's that. But Lutang kind of occurs when one person likes the other person more, or one person is like, okay, this person's attractive, but I don't know if I really like them. And that's kind of where, like, you kind of need that Lutang. Right? Sure, it's like, I think we got, or you got some advice a while ago that was like, Girl has to say no, like what, like three times or something like that. Uh, and if it's like, yeah, if it's but... the like the first three times she says no, that's the game. That's part of the that's game. That's the game. But right? if she says no the fourth time, then you don't fucked up. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, then, then you then that really means no. Yeah, and it's like, but... wait, what? It's like what? she could like you like crazy, but she might say no the first time. We, you know, to ask going on a date or something like that. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's playing hard to get, which which is. Yeah, playing hard to get, pushing and pulling. Which is the same in th- when you say it, but it's like different in practice to me. Yeah, it's a little bit different by how they, they go about it. But the I think the biggest difference in um, Korean flirting and American flirting or Western flirting is that Westerners, um, most for most part, they're more open to just touching members of the opposite sex. Um, like hugging your friends. Right or just like putting hands on your shoulders or whatever, but in Korea, if you are touching a member of the opposite sex, it is a big deal. You gotta it be is, dating, pretty much. It is a big deal. If you are if you are hugging a Korean person, you better be dating. Yeah, because that is a really like a big sign of intimacy right there. Yeah, I, I think right. maybe we've said it before, but like probably have hugging is as intimate like with the opposite sex of course mm-hmm. but hugging in korea is as intimate as kissing it's like a it's like, yeah, it's like a peck on the lips yeah it's not as intimate as like a peck on the lips yeah not like a french kiss or anything but like maybe a peck on the lips right like you know like a yeah which is like a tiny kiss um but i'm, I'm trying to think of a, a a great another example that was asked of you but I can't uh, asked of me or uh, given to you, advice given to you Mm. Because, like, for example, I mean, my girlfriend is Korean, but she was one of the ones that was like, I ain't, I ain't like no milk. I ain't like that milk tang. Um, uh, you know, I like you. You like me. Let's just whatever. So I didn't really have to. I don't have to go through that. No and if I, if I did, I would have fucked that up. Um, mm-hmm. Because in my entire life, I've always been like, I like you. I don't I, ain't, I don't want to play no damn games. Like, mm-hmm. uh, And that's actually not worked out very well for me. Uh, not playing that game um, in life. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, uh, but I don't know. I, I just couldn't imagine. Like I, The kind of reason I, I thought of this was that 
is were dramas like what's the chicken what's the egg were dramas modeled after how korean people in general liked relationships or were people just or, copying dramas or were they copying dramas hmm. right like which which one came first the the milk tongue or the drama milk tongue See, I think someone came up with this idea of milk tongue in a drama one time, and then people started to think that that was the way they wanted relationships, and then it like keeps circling. You know, like the more dramas are made, the milk tongue, more people want a milk tongue, and then milk tongue, milk tongue, milk tongue, and then now everyone's just all in that tank. The way I, the way I like to describe it is like in America, like everybody wants their relationship to be like a Disney movie, right? Like growing up watching like Aladdin, like. You know, whatever, blah, 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 Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, whatever, whatever. Like, yeah, bestiality, always great. Yeah, right. And then, obviously, a lot of people watch dramas in Korea. So it might be like, you know, Korean Disney. Yeah. It's like, do girls really like pink or do <laughs> parents just buy a lot of pink for girls and they happen to end up liking Yeah, pink? exactly. Who knows? Um, right. But so, I, I'm, I'm not like, you know, well, well versed in the form of Korean flirting, but we've we've seen enough of it to be able to talk about it. So don't take everything we say um, to heart as like you know gospel. So, yeah. and, and of course, I mean, as foreigners, we have a whole weird other set of rules. Yeah, so. we, we're seeing things through a little hole, right? <laughs> Someone make a gif of that. I would like that. But uh, anyways, uh, I think that's it for Two Way Goose. This was actually way longer than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, but uh, we were actually kind of scratching our heads about how we wanted to do this, but it's, yeah. we had a lot to talk about. So hopefully you liked it. Tell us if you did. Um, leave us a comment if you uh, want anything <laughs> asked that kind of... Anything specific. You know? Yeah. Um, but you know, if it's too specific, we'll just answer you in the comments. Um, yeah. But uh, we're, we kind of need some ideas for more stuff because... Mm -hmm. uh, Kind and honestly, of? we want to say we're just we're doing this for people who are curious about what's like living here, yeah. because um, we obviously have no motivation to do this for ourselves. Honestly, because we're experiencing we our, for ourselves, and me and Steven talk about this amongst ourselves yeah. without having to record it. Yeah. But uh, what you're interested about is more important because if we can tell you about what we what we've been through, then maybe. You can, Get a, a better taste of what Korea's like even if you haven't been here yet. Yes, yes, yes. And of course, here is where you can find playlists of all the other things that we do. You know, we got our podcast, This Week in K-Pop. We got our Way Gooks. We got our game called What Is That? It's a K-Pop guessing game. We got our reactions right here. And we got uh, Let's Talk K-Dramas, which is on hiatus right now. I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but uh, if you like uh, watching God's Gift, should check that out. We talked about the first six episodes. Um, but uh, yeah, until uh, next time, hopefully now we got this internet chunk working out, we can do this much more often, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, Josh is busy. He's got, you know, things to do. A lot of things to do. And he's got some thing. He's got some milk to tang. You know what I mean? But uh, so yeah, we'll talk to you guys later. Bye.